Hello lovely Libras, thank you so much for joining me, Lorian, for your May reading. And I'm so grateful to all of you who have chosen to watch this video. And thank you so much for leaving your comments below about how things resonate for you. It really does make my day, thank you. I really enjoy those. Okay, so I'm just going to shuffle the Everyday Witch Tarot and we're going to get a vibe as to what's coming through for you this month. This is going to be a spread um, in regards to something that I do for clients now and again. Um, so maybe love will come through. It has been kind of upside down for some readings. Um, not always about love, but about how you are faring in your own energetical field. And I'm also going to be touching a little bit on the moons for you in May. So without further ado, let's have a look and see what's coming through for you. Oh, nice. So you have the full here. When the full comes up, this is always a new beginning. You have to have faith. Um, there's a little bit of potential. Well, this is silly. This is naive. This is juvenile. Um, I can't possibly expect everything to be new and, you know, look at things excitedly, given my current situation. You know, there's that maybe a feeling of pulling yourself back a little bit because you think that your expectations are too far high. That's not the case here. I think that there's a lot that's going to be focusing a lot on you and more on how you feel about yourself. Now it could be that sometime I'm bringing him out already. This is my unicorn. Um, if you have any names for him, please feel free to suggest. Um, but the main thing with this that really draws my eye for you is the hawk up here, which did for another card or another reading and the ship down here. Now you're either thrilled that something finally seems to be moving or you're thrilled because something finally seems to be coming in your ship may be coming in now with this hawk here it's almost like messages being passed through this cat seems to be very very relieved that you've either hit high ground at last or is nervous about taking a leap this could be your inner psyche you know you're nervous about taking this leap whereas in reality you would be very very grateful to have everything change. Maybe you're worried whether you have the energy for everything to change. Maybe you're worried whether you have the stamina to keep up with stuff. But your spirit is eager for change. It wants change. Something about you wants your ship to come in so you can finally set sail again. Or something wants you to be able to soar high. But it's something that I think that you may need to make peace with because yes, everyone will have fears about what's meant to happen and how it's going to do it. Oh God, here he is again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to sound a little bit um down about it. It's not a down card. This it just keeps coming up in almost every single reading. So there's clearly a Knight of Swords energy coming through here, and I shuffle between every take and while I start the video. So it's very very thorough thor shuffling that I do, and he always seems to want to come up for me. So a lot of communication as it stands as well. You do have the full moon in Scorpio in your second house of finances. And that's going to be on the 18th of May. So it could be to do that you're discussing something about your finances or you're looking at how you want to speak about that or something to do with your income and your family life, how you want to um, see yourself as wealthy. But he may start the conversation. So this could be a Gemini opinionated person it could be an Aquarius or even yourselves um it just feels like there's a kind of a here I come to save the day energy with this one in in this interpretation to me this could be a cat among the pigeons something comes in and it's like whoa and it scatters them scatters the status quo you're ready to change you're ready to take charge you want to move forward and you want to be in control and all of this is forward motion it is so forward motion. It's like, yeah, I'm not staying here anymore. I'm continuing my path and I'm becoming the person that I want to be. And I think there's great power in that, to be perfectly honest with you. And then you have the four of wands. For a start, I thought it said four of friends. Um, but this is about your home life. This is more about your harmony and where you want to lay your foundations. This could also be that you have reached a stage where... You can finally relax or you know that you have thing, good things coming to you. This is you feeling your feet on the floor, very, very determined 
and allowing yourself a brief respite and to welcome the good things that are coming into you this time. I feel as though this is a celebration, this is a cause for rejoicing. This is a finally sort of feeling, this is a yay, I've got something going here. And it could be that the new moon that sets everything off um, on the 4th of May is in your 8th house. And this will be in Taurus, so it's a very practical approach. Um, but this 8th house is very much about career change, endings, so you can move forwards. Typically it's um, lorded over, <laughs> if you will, or owned by Scorpio. But with it being in Taurus, it could be very practical about these endings and practical about your resources. So you can utilise the change in a very logical and manifesting way. So I think that this is going to be quite good for you. And it could also be being very practical about how you build your spirituality, how you build your new connections to the universe, because you also have the Ace of Cups here. But also the Eighth House is about occult sciences. It's ruled by Scorpio typically, so you know, it will be about occult sciences. I'm a Scorpio, so I can say that. Um, but it could also be a case where you want to reconnect with the spirit that you have. Now, the Ace of Cups is very much a compassionate and intimate card. And I do feel that there's a lot of emotion going on for you. It may not be all good emotion. It could be some things that are riled up now and again. Are you anxious about things? But it is saying that where your emotions overflow, something will still grow. So if you have an overspilling of anxiety... That may start the seed of something else. So what you need to do is make sure that you are very happy. Um, or if you can't force yourself to be happy, obviously. If you can't do that, then I think it would be just to be content with what you have at the moment. It's always good to be grateful for the opportunities that you have already. And the fact that you have a roof over your head or something like that. Than to be anxious about what you don't have. Although I do see peace on its way. I do see peace on its way. And this is kind of saying that your crown chakra, you're manifesting. It can start with you. It can start with your emotions. It can start with your compassion for yourself, letting yourself be and letting yourself manifest whatever it is you want to bring into yourself. But at the moment, you may have too much going on or putting too much pressure on yourself. Like, oh, I have a list of things about the house that I need to do, or a list of things that are wrong with me, or this list of failed relationships. The thing is that your past or your current situation does not define who you are. You're constantly changing spiritual being. So what you need to make sure of is that you're not carrying these burdens and keeping them with you. You know, you have to make sure that the issues of the past are left there. So if you pick something up and go, oh, well, that was a mistake, put it back down, walk away from it. I think as well with this, it could be a sense of responsibility, like, oh, I must do this before I, or I must complete this before I. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you can just carry on on a different journey and, you know, leave something half done because it wasn't even yours to do in the first place. You know what I mean? It's all about managing your time effectively, managing the burdens that you feel that have been placed upon you effectively as well. And then it says temperance, so again, balance coming in here. I do think that this is to do with your health as well. Maybe something has been too too energetically draining for you and you're trying too hard to combine. I'm free, I'm fine, I'm okay to do this with the mental gymnastics of, oh, I'm okay, no, I'm not, oh, crap, this has come through. Oh, well, I've got to do this now. And I'm, You know, I do actually think mental issues are going to flare up or have been flaring up for you so the best thing to do is balance it out look at the good that's happening force yourself to turn that negative thought into a positive it happens all the time in science you can charge it different way as soon as you feel yourself going on the negative edge bring yourself back think oh what if this never happens change it to what if it does happen what joy will i feel then you know Turn it around. Make your fulfillment come from something within. The positive thoughts will actually generate better results for you. And then you have the Six of Cups, which is really nice. I think you'll look back at it and you'll be quite fun. To me, this is kind of, you're the cat in this situation. Now, I don't know whether you can see, but the little kitty is very, very happy with viewing this scene between these two. He's very, very happy. He's very sort of wistful. So it could be that he's like, oh, I remember the old days when this happened or we were you know, blossoming between each other and 
It could be that, remember when I was free enough to do this and I had the energy to do this? Great. But I think you need to look how far you've come and the knowledge that you've got as well and all the build-up of this kind of being around you. I think it's nice to take stock of the fact that, you know, the past was the past and you had good memories. Use those memories to base your future on. You know, maybe something from the past you want to re-experience. You want to re-experience a really lovely, beautiful friendship. You want to experience something that you had before. Use that joy that you felt then to manifest your future or to base your decisions off. You know, want to feel that joy again? Okay, well, let's start working towards it. Now is a great time for you. You have the fool here very strongly. You have a lot of potential. You have this manifestation almost at this entire top row. And at the bottom, it's how to practically do that. So you have the ten of wands. Yeah, you can kind of maneuver yourself, but not with all these burdens. Take a load off. Try and balance yourself. Make sure that there is a good sort of key to how you feel involved in yourself have a good relationship with yourself before you have a good relationship with anybody else you know what i mean and the six of cups is like yeah okay so if there's something that you wanted to experience maybe you can go and base your joy on that it's kind of like in harry potter his patronus which defeats evil is based and formed on the happiest memory that he has the joy and the wonderful emotions that come through so maybe your future can be based off this happy memory this fueled by you know, when I had this money, when I had this relationship, when I felt free, when I felt healthy, even if it was just a day or two, that feeling can actually fuel the good manifestation techniques that are going to come through for you after that while, you know. So let's see. Ooh, I tried to get one, but it seems like you have two here. Ooh, make a wish with a dandelion in the wind and growth. The tallest oak tree once started as a seedling. Don't be afraid to start something new. So it is a case of, oh, that won't work. Mm, it won't work. You tried it before, it won't work. Well, try it a different way then, you know. Make that wish. Feed it. You know, the tallest oak tree, oak tree won't start as a seedling. The seedling in this instant is your wish. So make a wish. Do something silly. You know, like all the folk magic, like people do say, make a wish on a dandelion and it will float and your wish will come true. Throw a coin in the fountain. All these little folk tales and, you know, don't walk under ladders and stuff like that. All these little things are based off real intentional magic. And it's, you know, like blowing out birthday candles and making a wish. That is its own form of magic. But you don't doubt it. It's a tradition, you know. It's something that you always do. Like, I wish for a beautiful year ahead. And you blow it out and then you don't think of it again. But then I think it's kind of just done in the moment of joy because it's your birthday, you're supposed to be having it nice. So it fuels that sort of wish and propels it into the future. So I think it's a case of don't be afraid to wish. Don't be afraid to grow as you wish. Don't be afraid to change the way you wish for things, the way you um, go about get getting those wishes fulfilled. Don't be afraid of changing. Because Libra, you have everything in a finite balance. And I know sometimes the smallest change can make your mood, make your emotions go pssst, and it goes on the other way like a seesaw. But the main thing to do is focus on the two main areas of your life that you want to improve. Think back to when you last had them at a level that you were happy with and use that to fuel your momentum in bringing that into your life. But I hope this helps you, dear Libras. I look forward to reading your comments down below. Let me know how it goes for you, won't you? And thank you so much for those of you who have emailed me for readings. All the information you need to do or to get one is down below in the description box or you can email me. But in the meantime, I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very grateful for you taking the time out with me today. And I'll bless you all and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye bye.